Hi guys, it's Jenny, and I'm here today to bring you my labor and delivery story for this little muffin, Mr. Riker Austin Alexander. Um, yeah. This is my son. I did a little quick intro video in the hospital for you guys, but um, if you haven't caught that, then yeah, I had a baby and um, here he is. He's very cute, as you can see. Um, quite the adorable little man. Um, very good looking, I if I do say so myself. Uh, pretty precious. And I am just beyond thrilled and in love and happy to have him. Um, he's just absolutely amazing in every way. And so... Um, yeah, my liver and delivery was an, a very interesting and transformative experience, I would say. And um, that's because in the end, I got this little guy and he has been just so amazing. And um, life has been just great since he's been here. He is <clears throat> um, six days old today. So yeah, this is little Riker. He's taking a little nap. And so... I'm actually gonna put him down in his pack and play real quick so he can sleep uh, before I tell you guys the rest of the story. But I just wanted you to say hi because look at him, isn't he so adorable? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, I'll be right back. So, um, um, as you saw, I released a little video saying that I was in labor. That was the afternoon of Saturday, October 3rd. Um, I woke up at 4 a.m. with contractions starting around 10 minutes apart and um, they were just kind of like waves of period, period kind of cramps, you know, um, that came and went and I was like, this is labor, thank goodness, because I was looking at possibly having to have an induction done in a couple days because little Mr. Riker was late. He was um, a week and two days overdue and so... I didn't want to go over 42 weeks um, because the risks increased significantly at that point for complications and things like stillbirth. So um, I'm really glad that he decided to come on his own naturally and that I didn't have to have the induction. And so Saturday was great um, for the most part during the day. I labored at home for 10 hours and, um, you know, my contractions got a little bit stronger and a little bit faster and we wanted to wait until my contractions were like you know five minutes apart for a minute for an hour um like they say before we went in but also our hospital is a two-hour drive so we didn't want to wait too far past that point um so i remember i took a bath at one point because i thought that would help me relax um and the bath was great, and once I got in the bath and started relaxing, I started having contractions at, they were all consistently about three to four minutes apart. <laughs> and so at that point, my husband came in and was like, oh crap, we need to go right now. <laughs> and so we got everything set, we put our dogs um, away, we had um, some friends of ours watching the dogs while we were away. and put our, you know, last minute stuff, got a bite to eat, got in the car and left for the hospital. And that was at two in the afternoon. And it just so happened that we were in the middle of a thunderstorm at the exact moment that we needed to leave. So we left and we drove in a significant amount of rain and thunder and wind for a while, um, which was kind of harrowing and fun. And once we were in the car, my contractions slowed down a little bit again. They kind of stayed, I would have them at four minutes to about eight minutes. So within that range. And then um, once we got to closer to town where our hospital was, they had gone down to about the five, six minute mark. And so we stopped to have a bite to eat because I didn't know when I would be able to eat again. Um, He's okay. Lucy is watching the baby in his little sleeper and uh, she's very concerned about him. Um, and so uh, we stopped to have a bite to eat and then they kind of started getting a little bit worse and a little bit faster. 
And so by the time we got to the hospital, they were pretty much between four and five and a half, six minutes. So we got there and went to triage. It was not a very busy day, thankfully. And they came in and checked me and, and she said I was about a four. So I was like, huh, you know what? I decided at that point that it was best that we get admitted just because being in the car and then being, you know, in the hospital walking around is not very conducive to my plans, which were to be using my hypnobirthing and relaxation techniques and visualizations and stuff like that. And to just really, you know, calm and relax myself. And so I just wasn't really able to do that very well with all the stuff going on. So um, I was like, let's get admitted. I am a four, which isn't terrible. And then we can actually, you know, get into our room, turn the lights down. I can start listening to tapes and relaxing, take a shower because that sounded really good at that point because contractions were starting to get a bit more painful. And we can get my doula to come. And so we did get admitted and um, that was at like six, I think, ish. And uh, so yeah, we got set up, my doula came down, she brought me the uh, birthing ball and I took a shower and started laboring in the shower. They didn't have birthing tubs in my um, hospital birth center, but the shower was great. I loved the shower, shower was good really helped um, because I was starting to have major pain in my back and the top of my hips here during contractions. Um, and so being in the shower and just having that hot water on my back was really, really nice. And so I stayed in there for a while and um, that was great. And then, you know, we just kind of labored in the room for a couple of hours. I tried a bunch of different positions, um, birthing ball, and all of that and um, it it seemed to be going pretty well I was able to relax a lot more listen to my hypnobirthing tapes and um, my doula and my husband were really great um, I really you know you don't know what to expect going in and as the contractions got more and more intense I was trying not to think about them as painful because in hypnobirthing pain isn't helpful <laughs> <laughs> so you try not to think about it like that you think about it more like pressure and so um, they were really great at talking me through every single one giving me counter pressure and um, they really just got me that whole period um, through in a pretty decent re relaxed state and um, I think I dealt with the contractions really well and so when they came back to check me again um, oh no, no no this is uh, after I was in the shower, I had gone back to the shower for a second time because my contractions were getting more painful and the shower really helped. And I actually, they brought my birthing ball into the shower. <laughs> so I was sitting on the exercise ball in the shower and I was kind of bouncing a little bit and moving my hips and I felt a little bit of a gush during one of my contractions, but because I was in the water, I was kind of like, I'm not sure if I just peed myself or what that was. So um, it happened again the next contraction and I got out a little bit later and I think it became clear pretty quick that my water had broken. Um, this was around mid uh, midnight, 11.55 when that happened. And so I was like, yes, now things are going to really start up. Um, and so... Unfortunately, I did have to get in, back into bed at that point to have my antibiotics um, hooked up because I was GBS positive, so I had to have a course of antibiotics, and so I did have to stay in the bed for about 45 minutes for that to, uh, to be hooked up to my IV. Um, and so I was in bed for a while, and that was okay. Um, I didn't enjoy the bed as much as I liked being up and moving. Um, and so... I did have to get into bed periodically this whole time because I was doing intermittent monitoring, monitoring. so um, they would have to hook me up and listen to the baby and, and my contractions and all that. And so they came in to check me and I was seven centimeters. Um, and so I, I honestly, I can't tell you what time this was. I feel like it may have been, no, you know, that was right after my water broke. Okay, yeah, it was around midnight. Um, 
when that happened. So I was like, yay, seven centimeters, we're, we're moving. So I had gone it from um, a four to a seven in between when I got admitted at six o'clock and midnight. So I felt like that was good progress. I was like, yes, go me. Um, and so I felt great. Well, besides the contractions, which were getting much worse after my water broke and much closer together. Um, and so I was like, yeah, uh, we'll keep laboring. And at that point, I started feeling different during my contractions. Um, now, I would feel them in my stomach. They would start at the bottom of my stomach here and move up my stomach. And then they would wrap around my back and I would feel it all through my lower back and my, the top of my hips would be really bad normally. And then after my water broke and I was at a 7 and 80%, um, I started feeling pressure, lots of pressure, in my bum, and uh, I was like, well, I know that is a signal of things starting to head southward. <laughs> um, once the baby starts coming down into the birth canal, you start having that sort of urge. It's a similar feeling to having to go to the bathroom. Um, and they did tell me he was at a minus one at that check. And so or it was minus or plus one, gosh, I don't know. But he was basically just engaged. And um, so I started getting that pressure and it started to get worse and it started to get really painful during contractions. Um, so that whole area was not happy. And um, I, my hips and my back started hurting a lot more. And so my, when they checked me and, um, my doula and I were, you know, trying some different stuff. Uh, it was suggested that the baby was face up um, and that I was having back labor. And so the baby was not in the greatest position at the time. Um, so he was basically spine to spine and he was looking this way. So I was like, crap, <laughs> you know, all the time I spent on my exercise ball and doing yoga and spinning babies, didn't get him in the correct position, or it did, and he shifted at the last, you know, at some point. So I was like, well, that stinks. But I still wasn't worried. Um, and then, so things after I started getting that pressure started getting much more intense as far as labor. And my contractions started coming about a minute apart. Um, and my doula told me I was um, heading into transition which is the last couple centimeters um, of the cervix. And then, you know, it's usually the most intense um, time of your labor. And um, it can last, it can be short. You can dilate that last couple centimeters in an hour, or it can last a while. <laughs> and I was like, well, I hope this goes quick because damn, this is really starting to suck. <laughs> um, and so, um, I just kept going and going and going and my husband and my doula really got me through all the, the really, really tough contractions. And um, I also, at a certain point, started feeling all that pressure, pressure in my vagina as well and pain in my vagina along with the pressure um, every contraction. So <laughs> contractions were not fun at this point and I was really having a hard time focusing on staying relaxed. It's really hard to stay relaxed when your body is doing that. Like, I really give people who are, you know, in the hypnobirthing zone a lot of credit because I was trying so hard and I just, it was just really, really difficult to keep that, you know, that at bay. And so they got worse and they got worse and they got worse. And um, at a certain point, I was just like on my bed clinging to the side rail in like the fetal position. And I was breathing through, but there was, I really felt like there was like nothing I could do to help with the pain. Um, and I just couldn't escape it. And it was really awful. Um, so we kept going and I got checked again two hours later and I was still at a seven. Um, and I hadn't moved at all which was really discouraging because I was like, I, this pain for this amount of time is not cool. And 
I really need to finish dilating to get the baby out. And everyone kept saying, you're not going to dilate. I mean, you, you might, but you really need to relax and stop, you know, um, during these contractions tensing up, but it's really, really difficult. So, um, and what was more at this point, I started, the contractions started coming and I would get all this pressure and pain in both my bottom and my vagina. And at a certain point, the urge to push from both of those places was so strong that I, I like could not stop my body from doing it. And so I would hold off and hold off and hold off. And then all of a sudden I would just be like pushing out and the pain during that was the worst. And immediately after I would push and I wouldn't be able to control it, the, the pain right after would be even worse. And I was like, this is nuts. This is crazy. Um, I can't believe this is what this is like. This is awful. Uh, and so that happened, that kept going. And that was just really, really tough to get through, honestly. Um, and it kept going for another almost two hours. And they came back to check me again. And I was still at a seven. I hadn't, this, it had been almost four hours of this transition pain and I was not dilating. And um, because the contractions were like making me push basically really hard, everyone kept telling me that I have to stop pushing because my cervix was only seven centimeters and I was going to tear it um, if I pushed. And the baby was not moving. So yeah, that was really, really frustrating because I knew that if I couldn't relax and I couldn't dilate anymore, baby could not get down through the pelvis and through the cervix and he was going to start pushing against it and he and I was going to tear my cervix um, and that was really bad <laughs> and also I just couldn't handle this pain it was much worse than anything I could have ever imagined that it would be so um, at a certain point it was almost 4 a.m. or no it was past 4 a.m. I'd been in labor for 24 hours and um, I basically thought it through even though I was kind of like not functioning really properly at a certain point and um I was like I will not be able to relax this ten I will not be able to release this tension and I will not be able to dilate anymore I know that if this keeps if this is what it's going to be like from now on and my contractions were right on top of each other and so I just I told them I I need the epidural because without it I'm not going to be able to have the baby I just knew that I wasn't going to. Um, and everyone immediately said, yes, yes, absolutely, you need the epidural right now. Um, and there seemed to be a lot of people in my room for some reason, like the nurses, more of the nurses and the on-call doctor would come back more right around then. And um, I didn't, you know, I, I was kind of in my own world, my eyes were closed all the time. And so um, the anesthesiologist came in and like everyone was just like, you are so amazing. You've done such an amazing job. We're so proud of you, but you need this. And um, so he came in and he was a really nice guy. And all I kept thinking was, you know, when a contraction would come, only one more and then it's gonna stop. The pain's gonna stop. It was all I could think of. And it took him a little while to get the epidural in me. <laughs> and all I just kept getting contractions on top of each other. And I just kept thinking, you know, this is the last one, this is the last one, this is the last one, and then there'll be no pain. Um, and the, But it didn't stop. So um, when the epidural went in, I was still feeling the pain um, for the most part. Some of it let up in my stomach, but um, I, I could still feel all of the pressure and the pain everywhere else. And all of a sudden there were a lot of um, people in my room and they were telling me to um, get on my hands and knees, um, get on my left side, get on my right side. And I was just didn't really know what was going on because I was really out of it. And um, all of a sudden everyone was saying that the baby's heart rate was too low. Sorry. And um, that he had stayed there way too long and they couldn't get his heart rate to come back up. And that they had been watching it for the last hour and that... Um, since I'd been in that um, pain for so long um, that 
my contractions had been taking his heart down. He'd been decelerating for quite a while. And um, right when that happened, it the epidural at the same exact time, his heart rate went down and stayed down. And um, yeah, they just couldn't get it back up. There was no position I could move in. Um, and I didn't know, you know, what, I, what, what to do or what was happening. And then, um, basically the on-call nurse called, you know, got on the cell phone with my doctor who was still there and said, you know, I'm really sorry, but I'm calling it for your girl. She needs the C-section right now and the baby's in distress. And at that point, um, I saw my husband sitting on the side being talked to by my doula and, um, everyone just immediately uh, got all my, you know, IVs and everything ready to go. And within a minute, I was being rolled into the hallway. And um, a minute later, I was in the room and my doctor was there in her scrubs. And um, everyone said, you know, uh, there's, or, you know, there's really nothing you, we can do. We just need to get the baby out right now. Um, I'm really sorry. <laughs> And so at that point I accepted, yes, I'm having a C-section, um, baby is in distress. There's absolutely nothing I can do. Hi slide. Oh, she doesn't like it when I cry. Um, sorry. And so I immediately switched off, um, any panic or emotion. I was basically just like, this is happening and this needs to happen. So, um, just this is going to be okay. Let's just do it. Um, and so my doctor was talking to me. She's really sweet. And they put the sheet up way up over my head. And um, the anesthesiologist came back and he was like, okay, we just need to, you know, increase your epidural to um, cover your entire lower body. And um, at this point, I was actually still feeling my contractions. And so I had a contraction on the table while they were prepping me. And so I was just like, yes, okay, good, do it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. My camera died at the most dramatic moment. And uh, so now uh, I'm feeding Mr. Riker, and so we can finish our story. Um, but basically, yes, I was on the table. It was hairy, hairy and um, they finally got the anesthesia working at the last second before everyone was going to freak out. Uh, because he needed to get out of my belly. And so as soon as she tested and I said, I can't feel it, she was like, we're going. So she uh, did the incision and I felt a lot of pressure and tugging. And um, before I knew it, I heard her say, hey baby. And I heard him cry. And that was the best moment um, and then they, she immediately gave him to the NICU team that was standing by and they took him over to a corner of the room so they could do everything that they needed to do to, um, get the fluid out of his lungs and make sure he was okay. And, um, a second later, my husband walked in and unfortunately passed myself on the table, um, you know, with my organs out and all of that stuff, um, which I'm sure was really fun for him. And um, he came right by and sat next to me and put his head under the tent where I was. And he just um, was with me and reassured me that the baby was okay and they were working on him and that everything was going to be fine. And that, you know, I just made sure that I, he was there for me, which was really great. And as soon as um, it took, you know, maybe like 30 seconds or something like that, but um, I finally started hearing Riker cry consistently from the other table and as soon as I heard him crying I was like it sounds like he's gonna be okay and so that was when I started crying you know and I just kept you know saying is he okay is he okay um can you see him and all that and uh you know as soon as I started crying you know my husband was like oh <laughs> I felt really bad for him um you know he just gave me a kiss and held my hand and um, he was watching him and, and talking to the nurses and reassuring me that he was fine. So basically from then on, um, they just worked on Riker for a couple of minutes, did his APGAR scores 
and it turned out that he was perfectly fine. Um, I, and so that just, I, it was very scary and stressful for a couple of minutes, but um, he was totally fine. And so they wrapped him up and gave him to my husband and he held him and brought him to me for a kiss. And then um, I still had use of my upper arms. Um, I didn't have any like strength in them, but I could still move them. So they brought him over to me and put him under my nightgown um, so that we could do skin to skin immediately, uh, which was amazing. So uh, they just laid him on my chest and I couldn't see his face because he was buried in my neck, but I held him and um, we just stayed like that and they sewed me up my and I you know it was just like it was just crazy in there but I was thanking everyone and my doctor and everyone was just really amazing and so um it took a little while and then they wheeled us back into our room and then that was it we had a baby um he never left us again after that he stayed right, right with us and so um I didn't have feeling in my legs, obviously, for a long time, and I couldn't really um, hold him very well, but he stayed right on me, and um, my husband was there with us, and uh, within 20 minutes, I'd say, we um, started breastfeeding, and that was great because he actually latched on, and I was like, we're doing this. This is crazy, and I saw him, and he was just the most perfect little angel he just he was just perfect um so i was just so happy from that point on that um that was the most important thing and um so that's how i labored and delivered this guy uh and um we did, we were in the hospital for two days and it was physically pretty tough for me because i'm sure anyone who's had a c-section knows they are very painful um the worst part for me was when I started feeling things again beneath my ab my um, abdomen and I could feel the incision. This was before I really had pain meds. Um, and when the pain from the incision came, it was like I was having contractions again. And of course your uterus does keep contracting after you have the baby. And so once I started feeling that, that was really hard for me because it was like, I'm so, the pain is supposed to be done. Like, I'm, I, I really just can't have any more pain. The pain, it was just giving me like flashbacks. <laughs> and so having that pain back was just excruciating for me. And I, I could not, I was just like, I can't, I couldn't take the drugs fast enough. I was like, please, please, please. I just can't feel this pain anymore. <laughs> so that was tough. Um, but I just tried to focus on having Riker with us and how amazing he was and the fact that he was healthy and my husband and I were together and everything was over. So yeah, I'd say, you know, the majority of my labor was great and I really feel proud of myself. Like I did an amazing job. I labored naturally for 24 hours and it was it was hard at the end, that last four hours um, in transition was really hard. And I think I did an amazing job and I'm very proud of myself. And I don't feel bad that I had a C-section and I don't feel like I failed um, because there wasn't anything I could do. Um, I have since talked to my doctor and she said that they sent my placenta away for testing, which they usually do in case of emergencies. And it turns out that my umbilical cord and the placenta were starting to degrade um, which wasn't really evident on the last ultrasound that I got. And um, when my labor got really hard, the last four hours, it started affecting its um, capabilities. And so it wasn't actually functioning very well in, in the last couple of hours. And so that is probably uh, what happened um, and why he wasn't receiving enough oxygen and why his heart rate was, um, was descending. So, um, yeah, that, I guess, makes sense. So, um, that's kind of tough. And also I think it was a combination of that and him just being in the wrong position and not having a really good way to descend. Um, that kept me in that state for so long that led to why we had to have the C-section. So anyway, that is my story. And, um, I'm just really, really glad that he's here. 
and healthy. Um, it's kind of hard to think about certain parts of what happened um, just because the memories for me and my husband, um, you know, are, are a little hard, you know, at times to remember because of the pain and um, everything happened really quickly and I feel um, like I'm sure it was terrible for my husband because he didn't know what was going on either and he didn't he couldn't do anything to help me so that's tough but um, we're gonna be just fine I feel like attitude wise um, we're great and I feel like um, you know I'm, I'm just I'm just happy that I have my son and he's beautiful and everything else that happened is what happened and it's it's fine you know it's what needed to happen so anyway um, I'm not going to blab on about that any longer, so thank you for listening to me. This is kind of like therapy right now, <laughs> just getting it all off, off my chest. So um, this has been good, and I'm glad that you guys have hung in here for this incredibly long labor story. And so um, thank you so much for all the well wishes, and um, we're just doing great and I will be back very shortly for you guys with our one week postpartum update for me and a one week update on Riker here to let you guys know how he's doing. So um, thank you so much. Like and subscribe and all that below. And we will see you shortly in our next videos. Bye guys.